Prime Time Local News, serving the Lakeland and Midwest regions. Hello, everyone. Happy Hump Day. We've made it halfway Wednesday. through the week. <laughs> yep, Wednesday it is. We have a really exciting show for you. We have our trending panel today for Wednesday, and we're talking cannabis. House of Hybrids will be here a little bit later in the show. Uh, Connor filling in for Elise today and also yeah. doing sports. Yeah, oh yes, yes. So we ha are going to look at two girls that are from Lloydminster that are going to compete in Greece actually really soon in the World Kickboxing and Karate Championship. Wow. So that's, they're representing Canada, so it's pretty oh, exciting. Oh, yeah. very exciting. All right, we look forward to that. And then Gerard, always on the agriculture beat. Yeah, the agriculture beat, uh, talking about the importance of testing water. And I mean, water is important for our cells, for our livestock, and it's a good way of keeping healthy. By yeah. Drinking good water. Yeah, definitely. All right. Well, we look forward to both those stories and more coming up soon on Primetime Local News. But first, we're going to go check in with our Brittany Matika to see where she's at tonight. Today, we're at the Lloyd Minster Figure Skating Club. And as you can see behind me, can skate sessions are in progress. The kids are out there learning how to skate. They're learning to jump, stop, go forward, go backward, and turn. We're going to have more of that coming up later on in the show. And speaking with one of the Can Skate coaches, as well as one of the Lloyd Minster Figure Skating Club's board members to find out what they've got going on for some fundraising coming up this season. But right now, we're going to head back over to the studio and check in with them. As of this week, some liquor regulations have been modernized by, Al by Alberta Gaming, Liquor and Cannabis. Bars and restaurants may now infuse flavors from spices, herbs or fruits with liquor and create house-aged liquor products. On top of this, licensed establishments may now let Albertans make their own beer or wine at facilities to be taken home. It's over the last number of years, we've had many requests come in for these types of things, specifically the ferment on premises and infusion. And this was something that we explored through consultation with industry and business, small business throughout the province. Additional changes allow Albertans to take drinks out of hotel bars into other areas of the hotel, including their rooms. Seniors' lodges may now allow residents to consume alcohol on the premises, and performers and theater goers may enjoy drinks within the licensed area after curtain call if the establishment chooses to allow it. A $100 donation is only a drop in the bucket for many nonprofit organizations, but for the 100 women who care Lloyd Minster, a $100 donation made by many can go a long way. Our Brady Matika. When over 100 women band together to make a difference, a lot can get done. Border City Connects provides medical transportation to residents in Lloyd Minster. They received over $27,000 to put towards a new van from the last 100 Women Who Care event in Lloyd Minster. The amount of money that they're able to collect in, in two hours you know, will have a, a very positive effect on any charity in the city that would be a recipient. So they're really making a ripple within the community. Founder of 100 Women Who Care Lloyd Minster, Janice Hoyen, says the concept is simple. We're a group of women who get together three times a year. We pledge to donate $100 to a nonprofit organization in our community, and then the funds are donated to one of the charities that's nominated at one of our events. Everyone who pledges to donate is able to listen to three nonprofits present what they would use the donated funds for, and then it's put to a vote. Sometimes it's so hard to select because they all touch your heart so much and there's so much need. It's, it's so hard, but I think the women do a good job of choosing what they think is, is good and everybody has another opportunity to come back and win again. The 100 Women Group has surpassed its name with 280 members and growing. We're just local women living in Leminster, moms, grandmas, teachers, anybody really can come out if you're willing to donate your $100. And these local women are making a difference in our community. Oh boy, you know, it's just amazing when you have that collective uh, charity going on like that. Uh, you know, and this community has proven time and time with volunteers and with generosity. Brittany Matika, Primetime Local News. Now the 100 Women Who Care Lloyd Minster is hosting their fall event tonight at Rolling Greens Golf Course at 7 p.m. if anyone is looking to head over and donate. The Lloydminster Region Health Foundation has received a generous donation from the local Ahmadiyya Muslim community. $12,000 was presented by the Ahmadiyya Muslim community to the Health Foundation from their run for Lloydminster. The run was organized with the hopes of raising money for a new ocular microscope to help keep local eye surgeries in the Lloydminster Hospital. They've uh, just been so uh, outgoing and helpful. They 
they, I think they have a genuine desire to uh, be integrated into the community and do as much for the community as possible. Both the Health Foundation and the local Muslim community look forward to making the run an annual event for the community. Over 125 people attended the run last month at Bud Miller Park. The Lloyd Mall is hosting a major fundraiser for local nonprofits, which over the past few years has raised thousands of dollars for charity. The Glitter Night fundraiser is taking place on November 13th, and all not for profit organizations are invited to get involved. The organizations will keep all the money that they have raised with the ticket books costing $10. In the past two years, more than $20,000 has been raised, and this year's goal is to raise almost $15,000. the tenants provide, uh, they offer uh, some dynamic uh, shopping discounts and specials and whatnot. It's a great segue into Christmas retail. Ticket books can be purchased at the Lloyd Mall Administration Office. 22 charities have already picked up books and are starting to sell them. And let's send it over to Brittany who's over at the Civic Center. I'm joined now by one of Lloyd Minster Figure Skating Club's Skate Canada coaches. Rydell Wardley joins me now and she's just stepped off ice as the kids are busy in session. Now share with us what ages is Can Skate uh, for? Primarily the Can Skate program behind us right now is uh, about age three to eight, give or so. Um, we do take kind of a little bit variance age range there, but that's typically the main kind of age range that we take on this ice right now. And the kids are divided up into different groups based on skill level? Yeah, so they we try to get them as close as we can with age and skill level, but um, we have a few move up and everything like that, so it just depends on the skater themselves. And now the Canscape program isn't just for future figure skaters. You do take on a lot of future hockey players. Of course, um, and it's not just hockey players either. We take on ringette, we take on speed skating, even recreational skating if you don't want to go competitive, anything like that. So it's definitely not just for figure skating. So the basics are always the same? Yeah, for sure. It's always uh, the best way to start is how we put it here at the club. Um, gives you that whole base rounded foundation to start out. Perfect. Well, thanks for sharing that with us. We're going to have a little bit more coming up here from Camskate later on in the show, but right now we're going to head back over to the studio and check in with them to find out what's going on. All right. Thank you, Brittany. Another beautiful day above the seasonal averages. Currently sitting at 12 degrees. We were at 13 or earlier this afternoon. A little bit of cloud cover, but mostly sunshine today. And look at these records, 22 degrees back in 2007 and then minus 16 in 1991. Luckily, we're not even into those minuses. Looking at our satellite radar from the last uh, couple of hours, some patches of precipitation down here to the southwest and that could be coming to us by Friday. But no watches and warnings currently in effect for the area, which is always a good sign. We did see a little bit of frost on the vehicles early this morning. However, 12 degrees here in Lloyd Minster, 11 in Edmonton, 12 degrees in Edson, 7 in Jasper, 13 in Rocky Mountain House, 14 degrees in Whitecourt and 11 in Athabasca. Over on the Saskatchewan side, sitting at 13 degrees in North Battleford, 17 degrees in Saskatoon. Gorgeous day there. 13 in Melfort, 11 in Prince Albert. As we look to our numbers across the region, currently sunny and 13 degrees in North Battleford. Little bit windy, winds coming to the east southeast at 21k per hour. And then overnight, we are going to see uh, some clouds roll in, minus one there. And tomorrow we could see some ice and nine degrees for the high there. Cold Lake currently sitting at 12 degrees overnight, dipping down to minus one. And then tomorrow cloud cover and a high of seven degrees here in the border city. 12 currently minus one overnight. And then tomorrow we are going to be a little bit cooler. Eight degrees there and we could see some rain starting Friday evening. So for the daytime high nine degrees minus two for the low. But in the evening we have a 60% chance we could start to see some flurries and that could continue into Saturday. 25% chance there, a high of 8 degrees. We'll have more details, including your 7-day forecast, coming up a little bit later in the show.
Prime Time Local News, serving the Lakeland and Midwest regions. Well, last week marked Education Week for students at LCHS. As Michaela Henschel reports in this week's Beyond the Classroom, students today are making major strides for a better tomorrow. across the division spent the week taking in a variety of activities for Education Week, centering around this year's theme, the world of learning for every child. We're here to talk about why, why it's important for us to understand that it is a privilege for us to have free education in Canada, and also understand that not everybody gets that privilege in the world. They were considered Métis, even though nothing had changed in their family except that they had gone to university. So While students Métis. learned about what education looks like around the world, they also heard first-hand stories about the impacts of residential schools here at home. Since we live in Canada, there's a lot of that that happened um, from our history. And if we don't learn about it, then we only really understand what's happening. And since the First Nations now have like a big effect on Canada, that we won't really understand the laws when we get older if we don't know about First Nations. Jeannie Corrigal has been speaking to classrooms about Aboriginal peoples for the past decade and says she's noticed a major shift in the last three years. That's why this message is so important because these children are so ready to move forward together with diverse cultures in a way of peace, which is actually the original intention of the treaties in Canada. It's important to learn about it so that we know how they were treated and um, why it's important to treat everybody with respect. Michaela Henschel, Primetime Local News. Beyond the Classroom is brought to you by Lakeland College. Apply to the hairstyling program and take the lead working with clients in the on-campus salon. Lakeland College, leading learning since 1913. On October 26th, the amazing corn maze in the town of Prime A will be getting a spooky makeover for Halloween. The maze will take around 40 minutes to walk through and will include 30 live actors to try and scare visitors. Like last year we had that big storm that came through and you know blew all the corn over, but the year before that we did, uh, it was all zombies, right? Walk, the Walking Dead corn maze. You know, we're kind of just sticking with themes. There will also be a seating area outside the maze where you can watch horror movies, a food truck, and fire barrels. You know, you're going to come down, you park up on the hill, and then you come down the hill, and you'll walk through kind of a, a big tube that we made, and then you could stand in our corral. We've got a big projection screen set up. We're going to watch horror movies while you're waiting in line, and then we've got a the smoke shack guy, which is, you know, he serves awesome food. The maze will go from this Friday until Halloween night. Well, do you know anyone that's living in South Carolina? And if so, you may want to give them a call today because that's the state where the loan winning ticket was sold for the Mega Millions lottery. Now, we should tell you that the whopping jackpot has amended slightly to $1.537 billion, making it the second largest U.S. lottery jackpot ever. If the winner or winners opt for the lump sum payment, it's $877 million before tax. And now let's take a quick look at your stock market prices for today. Welcome back. Well, what's in the water is important for us as well as our furry friends. I get to find out that it's more than just keeping the water bowl clean. Because the lab will actually measure that number directly. What's in your water? Is that water good for humans? Is it good for livestock? Jennifer Hayden has been with the Ministry of Agriculture for nine years and is based at the North Battleford office. Knowing what's in the water is a critical concern. 
what does it contain for minerals or metals or things like sulfate, which are not good for cattle. If water quality is poor, then that affects the steak on your plate from day one. We want to make sure water quality is good so that those cows get a good start. They've got good, um, good feed intake, good growth, um, good immunity and good production. Officers from the ministry traveled the province testing water sources. So we have water meters that we can take out and help producers. Um, specifically, they measure electrical conductivity, um, which will give us an indication of what um, total dissolved solids, which is a, a parameter that's um, probably familiar to most farmers and ranchers. So that's everything in the water that's salt, mineral, metals. The measure of total dissolved solids, or TDS, will determine whether further testing may be needed at the provincial lab in Regina. Producers should be testing. They should know, they should have a benchmark idea of what their TDS is, um, so that total dissolved solids, and what that's made up of. So is that, is it sodium chloride? Is it salt that's there? Um, is it sulfate? The ministry has numerous resources available to help producers, and water testing is recommended at least once a year. Ag Knowledge Centre is one 866 457-2377. Uh, we have some good resources on our website, saskatchewan.ca backslash agriculture. Um, and specifically the North Battleford office, they can call 306-446-7962. Gerard Lampau, Primetime Local News. That's our agriculture news. Connor is going to check in with a look at the world of sports. Let's check those ag prices. City Center Auto Body is proud to offer the paintless dent removal system. This works by going behind the panel, working out small dents, Lloyd Minster's trusted auto body shop for over 35 years. Well, Greece is hosting the World Championship for the World Kickboxing and Karate Union this week, and Abby and Izzy Seabri from Lloyd Minster are there to represent Canada. Josh Ryan has more on how the sisters transitioned from a different sets of high kicks. <laughs> The world of mixed martial arts is filled with remarkable people of different backgrounds and different motivations. But Garrett Tepper has never had anyone come into his gym quite like the Seabree sisters. I've never had kids this young that are at this high level. So it's, I gotta be honest, it's very interesting and unique to have. Abby and Izzy were ballet dancers until a few years ago when their dad encouraged them to give kickboxing a try. My dad wanted us to try something other than ballet. I fell in love with it right away and then I quit ballet. More move a lot more than in kickboxing than dance. In dance you don't get to hit things. The sisters picked up the basics at an astonishing rate, but what has separated them in competitions is their work ethic. The biggest thing that I can't teach is heart, and that's one thing they both came into the gym with, was a will where it can't be broken. They just push, 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 and if they get hurt, they keep coming, they keep driving, they keep moving forward, so it's pretty amazing. Soon, the Seabreeze were getting training in places like Calgary, and the winning accrued in the ring brought the attention of national organizations. Training every day and working really, really hard. While the two are extremely competitive, and even more so with each other, they're also perfect training partners. They push each other so hard when they're not competing against each other or training with each other, when they're sparring other teammates or when we're at tournaments and stuff like that, they encourage each other so much. They just constantly push, push, push to be better. In addition to family and community, Abby and Izzy can add country to the groups they are representing in Greece. For their instructor, he's satisfied with them earning the opportunity in the first place. As long as they do their best and represent themselves as, as you know, humble martial artists and uh, have fun doing it, that's what's important to me. So. I hope that I win and do as best as I can and learn a lot. This will be a great experience. However, that's not to say there isn't still winning aspirations. That I got two gold medals. Josh Ryan. Primetime Local Sports. And that's it for sports. Let's send it over to Brittany, who's over at the Civic Center. 
I'm joined again by Bridal Wardley, one of the Can Skate coaches here for the Lloydminster Figure Skating Club. Now walk me through an average day at Can Skate. What does that look like for our skaters? Um, so typically we spend about five, six minutes just doing warm up, going around the whole ice surface, just warming up our muscles, reaching up above our head, down to our toes, just kind of warming up. Um, after that we split into our three groups and go through our different sessions. Um, so we switch each week, but we try to focus mainly on the balance, control, agility um, every day. So going forwards, backwards, one foot glides, two foot glides, um, jumps and turns are kind of the basics that we start out with, get a little bit more complex with our sit glides and that kind of stuff uh, going on later through the season. But just first starting this season, it's going really well and just starting out those basic foundations. And now the kids do have to work through a Skate Canada curriculum and um, they do work up to get their different badges, isn't that right? Yeah, for sure. Um, so with this, we start with our pre-cans, the little three, four-year-olds kind of thing. Um, once they move up into our can skate program, they'll go about 45 minutes and go into the stages of one to six. And now can skate runs all the way now from now all the way through until March? Yeah, so um, we have our year end in the mar in middle about March. But the younger ones, it's a shorter 10-week program that runs twice a year? Yeah, so they'll go until middle of December. So. so if someone is looking to get their child registered for that January start date, are we still taking more skaters? For sure, um, and especially into January, going through that January to March session, you guys can go online to our Lloyd Minister Figure Skating Club, and it's all online there. Perfect. Well, thanks for sharing all that information with us. I think that some of these can skaters might be even able to outskate me. But unfortunately, we're out of time. But we'll have a little bit more coming up from the Lloydminster Figure Skating Club later on in the show. Right now, we're going to head back over to the studio and check in with them to find out what's going on. All right. Thank you so much, Brittany. Look at this gorgeous weather shot here. We're soon going to not see those on the trees any uh, anymore. But uh, Send them in while you can. This was sent to us by Stacy. If you have a shot of the weather, make sure you do send it in to us. We'd love to showcase it here. Looking at our numbers across the map, currently sitting at 12 degrees here in Lloydminster. We had a really, really great day above those seasonal averages. Mostly sunny as well. 11 in Vermillion, a little bit cooler at 10 in Vegreville. 11 degrees in Edmonton currently. A little bit warmer as we move down south. 14 in Wainwright and Provost. 13 also in Macklin. And then as we turn into the Saskatchewan side, uh, 11 degrees in Maidstone. A little cooler up in uh, St. Walberg, and then as we move up the map, 11 degrees in Meadow Lake. Uh, taking a look up north now, a little bit cooler, 7 degrees in Laloche and Buffalo Narrows, and then LaRange sitting at 8 degrees. Four, uh, four, degree, four degrees for South End. And then on to the Alberta side, a little bit warmer. We're seeing a little bit of a warmer trend here. 11 degrees for Grand Prairie. Peace River also sitting at 11. 9 degrees for High Level. A little bit cooler at 5 degrees in Slave Lake. And then 11 degrees for Fort McMurray. Now as we look south of the map here, 16 degrees in Lethbridge. 18 degrees in Medicine Hat. These are great, great numbers for this time of the year. 14 in Calgary. 8 degrees in Banff and 13 up in Coronation. And then as we look over here, uh, 19 degrees in Swift Current, 17 in Kindersley, 15 in Moose Jaw, and 14 degrees in Estevan. So the south was definitely seeing much warmer numbers today. For tomorrow, we are going to cool back down, back to our seasonal numbers. So 8 degrees tomorrow, 9 degrees for Maidstone, 12 for Macklin, 9 for North Battleford. And then over on the Alberta side, 10 degrees for Wainwright, 12 for Provost. A little bit warmer in Vegreville, sitting at 13. Edmonton's going to see a high of 14 tomorrow. But as we look to our uh, school day forecast, we are going to be in the minuses first thing in the morning. So minus 1 at 8 a.m., 2 degrees by recess time. Lunch hour warming up to 5 degrees. And then by the time the kids came home, head home, rather, that's when we're going to see our daytime high, 8 degrees. Mostly sunny, but the clouds are going to start to roll in. And then that's going to continue into Friday. So 9 degrees for our high on Friday. We do have a 60% chance we could start to see some showers into the overnight starting in the evening and then continuing overnight into Saturday eight degrees for the high there nine on Sunday now Monday this was snow it's looking more like a rain uh, mix now but 61% chance we could be seeing that on Monday seven degrees for the high and then even cooler as we move into the week next uh, Tuesday six degrees and then Wednesday Halloween not looking bad at least there's no snow in the forecast I don't want to jinx it but we could see a Snowless Halloween. We see a high of five degrees there, cloud and minus two for the low. All right, let's
let's send it over to Brittany, who's still over at the Civic Center. Vanessa Rose joins me now from the Lloydminster Figure Skating Club. She's one of the board members, and we were actually just talking about their number of enrollments has went up this year in the Figure Skating Club. They have 110 members, isn't that right? No, it's almost doubled since last year, so that's quite impressive, actually. A lot of work went into that. <laughs> and now you've been a member with the club now. Uh, you've had a child in figure skating for the past eight years, and there's been a lot of change in that time. There has. I mean, it's it's a nonprofit organization, and it relies on volunteers, right? So, I mean, every board that comes in are trying to do their best with the resources that they have. And some years, volunteers weren't as plentiful as others, right? So, a lot of the work laid on, you know, fewer people. Um, the last couple of years, we've been quite lucky. Um, the board members have really been working hard um, to streamline the club, um, to take out any hitches, to work hard, to make sure everything is running properly and as smoothly as possible. And so um, with that and some additional advertising and word of mouth, um, our numbers have yeah, almost doubled this year, so it's great to see. And now one of the biggest costs for the club is ice fees and we are doing a fundraiser uh, that's coming up actually this Saturday, a Halloween party that people can come out to. It's going to be fun. So if you haven't got your tickets yet, you have one more day to get them. It's this Saturday. Um, it's uh, the Dueling Pianos. It's happening at the um, Exhibition Center. <laughs> And it's a Halloween theme party. So the great part is you don't have to wear a costume, but you can. And if you do, you will get um, a little prize at the door. There's prizes. Um, there's a great meal included and lots of things happening throughout the night. So um, fundraising is what we depend on to keep the fees as low as possible for families so that they can afford it. And so for that reason, any support that anybody would like to give us, we'd greatly appreciate well, thanks for sharing all that information with us, Vanessa. And if you are looking for that Halloween party experience this Saturday, you can come out and support the Figure Skating Club. Tickets are $65, and they can reach out to the club to get the tickets? Yes, um, you can just go on LloydMinisterSkatingClub.com to find the contact information. There's also corporate tables of eight available for $480, so it's be a great time to take your employees out and, and have a night out of fun. So, yeah. Thanks for sharing all that information with us. And uh, but right now, we don't have any more time. We're going to head back over to the studio and check in with them to find out what's going on. All right, well, someone in North Carolina woke up a multi, multi, multi millionaire today. Was it North or was it South Carolina? Oh, sorry, yes, South Carolina, oh, not North okay. Carolina. Uh, South Carolina, yep, <laughs> won the big there, jackpot know. of yeah. 1.6. <laughs> billion dollars Ouch. and oh, uh, here at home you could win 60 million dollars. No. I'll take that. Yeah I mean that would <laughs> no still kidding. be nice. So today's question of the day was what would you do if you won the lottery and we actually got some there's some very generous people here in the city. Yeah. Uh, Rhonda says depends how much but I would love to build an arena in Pierceland with artificial ice for the kids. Uh, we also got a lot saying that they would feed the hungry here in Lloydminster and also donate to the SPCA. So Really? They're really not. I was like, oh, I'm going to get 12 Bugattis and our people are like, we're going to feed the hungry. So what would you do if you won the lottery? You wouldn't feed the hungry? Well, of course I would, <laughs> but. You wouldn't find a way to permanently deal with the situation so no one would ever be hungry again. Well, yes, but that wasn't the question. <laughs> okay, well, we ran if out of time. We got to go to the pets now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, sorry, you took too much time there. All right, let's look at our pets of oh, the day. Uh, so Milo, look at this sleeping cutie. That was sent to us by Christy. And then next we have, look at this Mona. It looks like she's getting her nails did. That was by uh, sent to us by Melissa. And then next up we have... Okay, this guy didn't have a name, but he was too cute not to enter. So this is sent to us from Jody, super adorable kitten there. And then uh, next up we have Franklin. Franklin looks like he's missing some hair and this was sent to us by Maria. And then look at this guy. Also didn't submit a name, but this is, I'm gonna call him Cat in the Hat. <laughs> <laughs> he's ready for fall and winter. And that was sent by uh, sent to us by Shauna. So if you have a pet of the day, you'd like to see her on primetime local news, make sure you send it in. Do include their name. And if you see them here on the show, you will then be entered to win a gift card to Lloydminster's Pet Pad.
We want to see your pets. Send photos of your pet and their name to our Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram to have them featured on Pet of the Day. Your name will be entered into a weekly draw for a gift certificate from the Pet Pad. The Lloyd Minster Figure Skating Club's Can Skate program is underway. The skaters will skate from now all the way through until March when they have their year end carnival. Uh, however, the preschool, the learn to skate program for the beginners, the littlest ones will only be running until December and then they'll pick up again in January. So if you are interested in getting your little ones uh, out there on the ice and learning to skate, whether they want to be a future figure skater or a future hockey player, uh, the program definitely has a lot of value and it is all done through Skate Canada. So is a really great program for their coaches as well. Uh, remember that that Halloween party fundraiser for the club is coming up on Saturday. So get your tickets if you are interested in seeing the dueling pianos. Now tomorrow I'm going to be at World Class Gym learning out some new workout routine. So now that the weather is a little bit cooler. Unfortunately, we're out of time, but right now we're going to head back over to the studio and check in with them. All right, thank you so much, Brittany. I might need to get in on that program because I don't know how to skate. Uh, but we are going to look to our uh, our seven yeah, day company. yeah our seven day trend. Uh, Thursday, eight degrees. Friday, nine degrees. We could see some uh, rain activity uh, starting Friday evening in overnight to Saturday. Eight degrees for Saturday, nine for Sunday, and Monday is when we have that big chance of uh, rain throughout the day. Sixty one percent chance there. A high of seven degrees. Tuesday, the sun will start to peak back out six degrees there minus one for the low and then Wednesday Halloween cloud cover but five degrees and no snow in the immediate forecast so we could be seeing a snowless Halloween and that plus five plus five degrees <laughs> I mean it won't be plus five when you're out <laughs> trick-or-treating but uh, even if plus three <laughs> yeah, you don't need to wear the snow pants, kids. It's going to well. be a good one. <laughs> Anyways, that's all the time we have for tonight. We'll see you here tomorrow. Take care.